Tonight, Nashville police revealing new details about the moments before the shooter left home to carry out the deadly rampage that killed three nine-year-olds and three adults. She had a red bag. Uh, they asked her uh, what was in the red bag, and I think she just dismissed it because it was a, a motherly thing. And I didn't look in the bag because at the time she didn't know that uh, her daughter had any weapons and didn't think any uh, differently. We know among the weapons the shooter was carrying was an AR-15 rifle, which has been the weapon of choice for mass shooters in the United States. In fact, there have been 96 mass shootings committed with AR-15 specifically over the past 10 years, according to the Gun Violence Archive. That includes Uvalde, Parkland, Buffalo, Las Vegas, and Newtown, Connecticut. Out front now, Dr. Lillian Liao, a pediatric trauma surgeon in Texas who treated patients from the shooting in Uvalde, where 19 elementary school students and two teachers were killed. And Dr. Liao, I appreciate your time uh, tonight. Um, obviously, it's unfortunate to have to even be speaking to you about this topic, but here we are, unfortunately, again. And many <clears throat> people are hearing about AR-15s again and the injuries uh, from these AR-15s. The reason these rampages are so deadly is because of how deadly these weapons are compared to other guns. We have an animation, uh, Doctor, that I want to show you that the Washington Post put together. It shows the trajectory of a 223 caliber sized round fired from an AR-15. And the bullet enters the body and then bursts into the chest cavity. Can you just explain for our viewers what this rifle actually does to the human body? Sure. Um, you know, these um, high velocity firearm injuries, such as the AR 15 that you're showing, creates devastating wounds. Um, big body cavities. Um, are seen if the victim makes it to the trauma center alive. And really, most patients have no time um, to um, bleed. Uh, you can bleed to death in as little as five minutes. And so uh, with the type of wound that's created, uh, most people will not make it to a hospital, let alone a trauma center, alive. Those that do have large gaping holes in their body. We're missing areas that what we would call muscle, um, what people would call bone, those things are missing. Um, skin and fat, um, all of that is missing. Some body parts are not recognizable. Um, I am part of a um, very sophisticated regional trauma system that unfortunately cared for um, victims from two mass shootings. And from the first mass shooting in Sutherland Springs, we really learned about how we can save more lives from high velocity firearm injuries by looking back at the patients that we did not receive and how we could help them slow down their bleeding, um, help them refuel the tank because you only have so much blood in a human body. And if we right. could refill that tank before they get to a hospital, then there's a potential to save those lives. And and when we talk about assault weapons in this country, and, and just I just want to put, I mean, as, as gruesome and horrible as this conversation is, it's needed um, to inform the political conversation. So when you talk about an AR-15, there's another animation the Washington Post has. It just simply shows the differences in exit wounds between an AR-15 and a smaller uh, nine millimeter. So the small isolated hole from a nine millimeter bullet fired by a handgun uh, in blue and then in orange, that's the gaping exit wound from the AR-15. Uh, the, the difference here is very stark. So when, when you talk about the type of weapon used, it sounds like you're just saying clearly from a medical perspective, to state the obvious, there's a huge difference. There, there's absolutely a huge difference. And the tissue destruction from these AR-15 type um, firearms is completely different than a regular um, handgun. Um, we have to take these patients who actually make it to the hospital alive multiple times to the operating room to clean up tissue that continues to die off over the course of the next week to two weeks before we can even begin any kind of reconstruction of the body parts. All right, Dr. Liao, thank you very much. Um, that's hard to listen to, but important important to inform the conversation in this country that, that needs to be had that, that we just continually don't seem to have about assault weapons. Thank you. Thank you.